All right, everybody's looking really good. We want to welcome you. This is the Global Watch International Call. It's June 24th, 2022, 5 p.m. Jerusalem time. And this hour is Shabbat, our favorite hour of the week. And today we have a special treat. Our Shabbat is being led by Carolyn Hyde from the Galilee in Israel. And so it doesn't get any better than that. So Carolyn, we're just going to speak a blessing over you and then we'll, we'll turn it over to you. Father, we thank you for Carolyn. We are just so thankful for uh, you, Carolyn, and your ministry and your faithfulness to Israel and uh, uh, your incredible love of your people. And we just declare that 2022 is going to be an amazing breakthrough year for you. We're so thankful that you have, uh, the Lord's been calling you to come to California and, uh, and we're going to, we just declare tremendous, tremendous favor, both in Israel and in California, when you come. And uh, we just declare also that God would give you in this hour, great wisdom and revelation from Ephesians 1, that you would know him better and that uh, he would give you constant renewed strength that he'd renew your youth like the eagles and that he would hide you in the shelter of your wings, you and your husband and your fa whole family, children and grandchildren. No harm would come to you, no destruction near your tent. And we declare that the best days of your life and your ministry are ahead of you and not behind you in Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen. Tadarava. Beautiful. Thank you. Shabbat Shalom to you, dear ones. And um, yeah, let's start off with worship. Um, I've chosen these two songs on purpose, because uh, there's a message in them, and it ties in with the Parashat Shavua, the Torah portion of the week. Um, one is a song that you probably know. Um, it's called The Reckless Love of God. Um, it's quite a well-known worship song. But when you look at that word reckless in Hebrew and what it, what it really means, I would never call God reckless, ever. So I changed the words of this song, <laughs> um, and the, the, a word that rhymes with reckless is gracious. So it's, oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, gracious love of God. And um, so I'll, I'll sing it that way instead. And, and there's a reason for that, um, which I'll go into uh, later. Um, yeah. Before I spoke a word, you were singing over me. You have been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. You have been so, so kind to me. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, gracious love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the 99. I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it. Still, you give your life to me. Oh, the overwhelming, never ending, gracious love of God. I was your foe, still your love fought for me. You've been so, so good to me. When I felt no worth, you paid it all for me. You have been so, so kind to me. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, gracious love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the 99. I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it, till you give your life for me. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, gracious love of God. Ooh. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming up, 
to me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, come after me. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, gracious love of God. Oh, it bites me down, chases me down, leaves the 99. I couldn't earn it. I don't deserve it. Still you give your life for me Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending Gracious love of In the roar of your waterfalls, deep calls to deep, as your waves wash over me, deep calls to deep, in the roar of your waterfalls, deep calls to deep, as your waves sweep over me. Speak to the deep places in my heart. Open a fountain in my soul. Speak to the deep places in my heart. Open the heavens above. Speak to the deep places in my heart. Open a fountain in my soul. Speak to the deep places in my heart open the heavens above 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 be truly Shari Ashmahi, open the heavens above, open the heavens above. Lord, we thank you for the Shabbat. A Shabbat of open heavens, a Shabbat of open visions. Pitchuli Sharet Seret. Thank you for the open heavens. 
Lord, we exalt you. We exalt you this Shabbat. You are the one who can take what was broken and you put it all back together in ways that are beyond our understanding. You are the one who redeems us and you redeem our children even when we ourselves have sinned against you. You have mercy on the generations to come. We are so grateful for your mercy. Shemeshua. So yeah, so I'd like to share something with you uh, this Shabbat. God is so good the way he does things, yeah? The way he redeems and delivers, uh, it's beyond our comprehension. And it ties in with this week's parasha. Now I know maybe some of you, if you follow the parasha of Shavua, the Torah portion of the week, um, I don't know if you know this, but here in Israel, we're actually ahead. Um, <laughs> so while you're reading Numbers 13, um, we're already in number 16. And so the parasha this week is Korach, um, or I guess you say Korah in English, um, the great rebel. And you know the story. I'll just uh, kind of tell it briefly. So as we came out of Egypt and we saw the great, great wonders that God did in our midst, including parting the Red Sea for us so we could walk through on perfectly dry land, we were still fetching. We were still complaining. We didn't like the food. We didn't have enough water. We were always complaining. And then it kind of reached a climax with uh, Korach and his friends. Um, yeah. Let me read this part. He was with two other, Dathan and Abiram, and they rose up before Moses and Aaron, and they spoke words of arrogance. But these were men of renown. Everybody had total respect for Korach and the other two. And when they came against Moses and Aaron, I'm sure they felt all alone because the whole crowd seemed to be against them. And they said, you've gone far enough. Every one of us is holy. And so why do you exalt yourselves over the whole assembly of the Lord? They were saying this to Moses, who was a very humble person. When Moses heard this, he fell on his face. He didn't try to justify himself. He didn't try to say how great he was. He just fell on his face and he let God do the rest. And all he said was, just let's meet before the tent of meeting tomorrow and let's hear from the God. What else could he do? He did the right thing and he had them take censors and then he said, okay, um, let's see who God chooses. And, but what he said was, isn't it enough? Dainu, basically, that the God of Israel has separated you from the rest of the con congregation. After all, these were Levites, Korach and uh, Datan and Abiram. And, and he brought you near to himself to do the service of the tabernacle. Oh, and the Supreme Court just released an opinion on the Dobbs case. Roe v. Wade overturned. Wow. Wow. Well, this is so appropriate because as we read this, Look at the spirit of Korach and what it did, the rebellion that it brought. We rejoice, oh God, we rejoice in the overturning of Roe v. Wade. What a miracle. What an absolute miracle. And that we can celebrate this together. Right in the midst of reading the parasha on Korach, who is the ultimate in rebels. Wow. I think God is saying something to us that he wants us to be prepared for what's next. Um, I'm going to continue reading while we rejoice, though. And so, sure enough, they came together. 
And wow, he even asked Datan and Abiram to come up and they said, no, we won't. The whole story is rife with rebellion. So Moses was very angry. He told the Lord, don't even listen to these people. I haven't taken anything from them. Moses said to Korah, you and all your company present yourselves before the Lord tomorrow. Take a fire pan with incense and let's meet before the Lord. So they did it the next day. And this is, maybe we can pray for this. I mean, I, wow, be careful what we pray for. Um, but the next day, the day after this uh, act, Korach gathered all the congregation, it says, against Moses and Aaron at the tent of meeting, and the glory of the Lord appeared to all the congregation. Yes, it is going to be the great of an unraveling. What happened? Moses said to the congregation, get away from Korach, Bethan, and Abiram. Get away from them and all their love, all their families and all that belongs to them. And he said that if this is just from me, okay, then it's nothing. But if this is from God, then the earth will open up under them. And sure enough, you know, that's what happened. The earth opened up and swallowed them. Of course, we don't pray things like that over people. We don't, we don't want to see things like that happen to people. But I want to share something as we go into this time of rejoicing and most likely great, great sorrow because of what the left wing is probably already planning in response to this uh, tremendous victory. It's just beyond, beyond. It's something we have all prayed for and labored into. Hallelujah. I want to share a little story. So a couple of years ago, the Lord called us and he said, you will go to Georgia and um, this will be the center of your journey. We didn't really know a lot of people there, but suddenly the Lord opened up all these doors to meet people in Georgia. And somebody said to us, have you ever heard of the Georgia Guidestones? And I said, no. And they said, look it up. Have you all heard of them? This is a place that... Uh, of, of the highest level occultic place um, that they don't even know who built it, but it's, it looks like a mini Stonehenge, Stonehenge and it has the uh, newly revised 10 commandments <laughs> as if God would ever revise those. Um, and they have four pillars with writing on both sides. So they, they have eight languages represented. Of course, English is one, Russian is one. Um, I think Spanish, I'm not sure all the other ones, but Hebrew is one of the eight, which was kind of surprising. Um, and so, yeah, many have seen it or heard of it. So before we went there, I, I was just doing research on it and didn't really know, like, what is this place? It, it, it's so dark. And the Lord began to speak to me. And it really ties in with the parasha. He said, I want you to go to this place. The people who built this place are evil and they have evil intentions. And um, I don't know if you know this, but the first of their 10 uh, revamped commandments are that there will only be 500,000 people um, left on earth. Well, the earth has what, two point something billion people? And so they're, they're looking at uh, reducing the numbers greatly. Um, and that's what is the first commandment at the Guidestones. But what the Lord said was, I want you to prayer walk, march around this place seven times. I want you to bury a time capsule. He told me what to put in it. And I want you to pray for the children of these people who did this. Because some of them I will redeem. This is our God. He takes what was meant for evil and he redeems it. And so back to the story of Korach. You know, when you read the Psalms, have you ever noticed that some of them are the children of Korach? Those are who wrote some of the most beautiful Psalms. And I thought today as we're praying into this tremendous victory, 
we could read some of those psalms from, I'll type in the list, and I would like us to go into a time of prayer, rejoicing also in what happened, but also reading these psalms and remembering the generations to come, because that's, that's our God. He is going to put justice out there on those who have, have done these horrible things, on, on the evil, but he wants to redeem the generations to come. And so um, if somebody can type these in, it's Psalms 42 to 49, 84, 85, 87, and 88. These are all psalms uh, that the children of Korach wrote. Yeah, so if you'd like to unmute yourself, read a little bit of the, prayer, of the psalm, and, and then pray. Um, Carolyn, can you say those psalms again? I'll put it up there. You're wanting us to read from Psalm 42 to 49? Okay. Is that psalms, it? Yes, 42 to 49. 84 and 85, 87 and 88. I just put it in the, in the chat. I'll be glad to start with Psalm 42, Carolyn. As a deer longs for flowing streams, so I long for you, God. I thirst for God, the living God. When can I come and appear before God? My tears have been my food day and night, while all day long people say to me, where is your God? I remember this as I pour out my heart, how I walked with many, leading the festive procession to the house of God with joyful and thankful shouts. That was one through four. Hallelujah. I'd like to read just a little bit of 85. A Psalm of the Sons of Korach. O oh Lord, you have showed favor to your land, and you surely have by overturning Roe v. Wade. You have restored the captivity of Jacob. You forgave the iniquity of your people, and you covered all their sins. Selah. And I'm going to turn this into a personal prayer. Lord, withdraw your fury. Turn away from your burning anger. Restore us, O God of our salvation. Restore us. Restore our nation. Hashem Yeshua. I'll read Psalm uh, 43. Prayer to God in time of trouble. Vindicate me, O God, and plead my cause against an ungodly nation. O deliver me from the deceitful and unjust man. For you are the God of my strength. Why do you cast me off? Why do I go mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? Oh, send out your light and your truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy hill and to your tabernacle. Then I will go to the altar of God, to God my exceeding joy. And on the harp I will praise you, O oh God my God. Why are you so cast down, O my soul, and why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him, the help of my countenance and my God. O God, we have heard with our ears, our fathers have told us, what deeds you performed in their days, in the days of old. You with your own hand drove out the nations, but them you planted, you afflicted the peoples, but you set but them you set free, for not by their own sword did they win the land, nor did their own arm save them, but your right hand and your arm and the light of your face, for you delighted in them. You are my king, O God, ordained salvation for Jacob. Through you we push down our foes. Through your name we tread down those who rise up against us, for not in my bow do I trust, nor can my sword save me. But you have saved us from our foes and have put to shame those who hate us. In God, we have boasted continually, and we will give thanks to your name forever. Selah. 
but you have rejected us and disgraced us and have not gone out with our enemies. You have made us turn back from the foe and those who hate us have gotten spoil. You have made us like sheep for slaughter and have scattered us among the nations. You have sold your people for a trifle, demanding no high price for them. You have made us the taunt of our neighbors, the derision and scorn of those around us. You have made us a byword among the nations, a laughing stock among the peoples. All day long, my disgrace is before me, and shame has covered my face. At the sound of the taunter and the reveler, at the sight of the enemy and the avenger. Uh, somebody want to take from 17 on? All this has come upon us, but we have not forgotten you, nor have we dealt falsely with your covenant. Our heart has not turned back, nor have our steps departed from your way. But you have severely broken us in the place of jackals and covered us with the shadow of death. If we had forgotten the name of our God or stretched out our hands to a foreign God, would not God search this out? For he knows the secrets of the heart. Yet for your sake, we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Awake, why do you sleep, O Lord? Arise, do not cast us off forever. Why do you hide your face and forget our affliction and our oppression? For our soul is bowed down to the dust our body clings to the ground. Arise for our help and redeem us for your mercy's sake. Psalm 45. My heart overflows with a good theme. I address my psalm to the king. My tongue is like the pen of a skillful writer. You are fairer than the sons of men. Graciousness is poured up on your lips. Therefore, God has blessed you forever. Strap your sword on your thigh, almighty one, in your splendor and your majesty. And in your majesty, ride on triumphantly for the cause of truth and humility and righteousness. Let your right hand guide you to awesome things. Your arrows are sharp. The peoples fall under you. Your arrows pierce the hearts of the king's enemies. Your throne, O oh God, is forever and ever. The scepter of right uprightness is the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you above your companion with the oil of jubilation. All your garments are fragrant with myrrh aloes and cassia from ivory palaces stringed instruments have made you glad king's daughters are among your noble ladies at your right hand stands the queen in gold from a fire here o daughter consider and incline your ear forget your people and your father's house then the king will desire your beauty because he is your lord bow down and honor him. The daughter of Tyre will come with a gift. The rich among the people will seek your favor. Glorious is the king's daughter within. Her robe is interwoven with gold. She will be brought to the king in embroidered garments. The virgins, her companions who follow her, will be brought to you. With gladness and rejoicing will they be led they will enter into the king's palace in place of your fathers will be your sons you shall make princes in all the land i will make your name to be remembered in all generations therefore the peoples will praise and give you thanks forever and ever amen psalm 46 one of my favorite god is our refuge and strength a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling, Selah. 
There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her just at the break of dawn. The nations raged. The um, kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice and the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is, our, is with us and the God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. Come, behold the works of the Lord, who has made desolations in the earth. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two. He burns the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. Particularly relevant for today is amazing news. Psalm 47. Oh, clap your hands, all you peoples. Shout to God with the voice of triumph. For the Lord Most High is awesome. He is a great king over all the earth. He will subdue the peoples under us and the nations under our feet. He will choose our inheritance for us, the excellence of Jacob, whom he loves. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God, sing praises, sing praises to our king, sing praises, for the God is the king of all the earth. Sing praises with understanding. God reigns over the nations. God sits on his holy throne. The princes of the people have gathered together the people of the God of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong to God. He is greatly exhorted. Amen. Amen. Sue has a video to share. I think it's so appropriate on this day. Again, everything. I love how the parasha ties in with everything. Um, this is a video of Psalm 46 by the underground church in Iran. Iran is a nation that even to this day uh, sounds the call, death to Israel and all this death to the West. Um, and yet it's got the fastest growing church in the world. And so this is our God taking what was meant for evil and turning it into something good. So yes, please show that. I think that would be encouraging. Well, I think this captures the essence of the message today. And um, I, uh, I don't think it's a mistake that this, this um, decision from the Supreme Court came out with all of us here to hear it. But this message must go out and I pray, take courage with the message of the song. This is one of my, my most favorite worship songs in the world, but here we go. Wow. So Sue, this is a video that the underground church in Iran put together. Yeah. I find it interesting that uh, it was very violent for a worship song, and yet it, their culture is a culture. Uh, I mean, they because of all that's happening with all the imams, there's a lot of violence. But the scripture that came to me while I was watching it, violent men take the kingdom by force. And um, again, it's our God overturning. Um, our God is the one who overturns. I think it's... It would be a good thing with the rest of our time. I want to do communion too, but um, would someone like to read Psalm 91? Uh, because I'm deeply concerned about sure, the uh, justices, the um, pro-life clinics, um, mm. all those who are vocal um, and they're known in their communities for being pro-life. I'm very, I'm deeply concerned for them because if it had gone the other way, um, the right wing wouldn't do things like that. But I'm very concerned that the, the left wing will try to do uh, things they shouldn't do. Let's put it that way. Um, so, hey, Caroline. Yes. They, they already started. I mean, it's, it's in motion already. You know, things, places are being burnt or... 
react. So it's nothing that they're going to do. They're already doing it. It, it, it was, it's almost, we know it was part of the plan too, but it just would be appropriate to read. So actually, Fred, could you read Psalm 91 for us? And just let's really meditate on that and speak it over the justices, the pro-life clinics, um, all those who are involved um, in pro-life. And by the way, I just got a message from our sons. They are rejoicing in this, all the pro-life work they've been doing in Israel. Um, yeah, it's good news. Okay, <clears throat> Psalm 91. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in him I will trust. Surely he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will take refuge. This is for the whole United States. He shall be your truth and your shield and your buckler. No, his truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the most high your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra. The young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call on me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Father, we thank you that, um, Lord, we thank you for this decision that has been 50 years in the making in the United States. And, and we just say, Lord, thank you. We know that, that this doesn't mean the end to abortion in America. It goes now to the state legislatures. But Father, it's a step in the right direction. It opens the door for, um, for life to prevail. And Father, we thank you that with this decision, a curse over the United States is, is lifting. And, uh, and so we say, Lord, your kingdom come and your will be done for all the believers, for all the people in the US uh, and really around the world. We just say, God, give us wisdom. Give us wisdom and favor how to, how to go forward, how to talk about this. Um, we just declare that um, greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. And um, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty for pulling down strongholds. And we say that, that there's a huge deception stronghold that exists uh, concerning abortion. And we just say that, that those days of that deception are coming to an end um, in Yeshua's name. And we just say, Father, as we rejoice, we are just also praying for just protection over the over the uh, the the pregnancy centers, over the clinics, over just even believers who speak out uh, in favor of life. And uh, but we say thank you, Lord. We the joy of the Lord is our strength today as we celebrate this victory in Yeshua's name. Amen. Yes, Lord, I want to particularly pray for the churches. Um, because in recent days, there have been some crazy people coming in them with guns and opening fire. But I just ask you, Father, for the blood of Yeshua to cover the doorposts of every church in America. I thank you, Father, that you will shield your people, shield your children from anybody who's trying to, anybody who's got a spirit of Korah, who is in rebellion and, and trying to draw attention to themselves. Lord, we just ask that you would, just open up the earth under them and uh, give them a little fear of God. We, we 
we don't want to pray for people's destructions. We pray that people would get the message with a, a shaking under their feet um, of what's to come if they, unless they repent and, and turn from their evil ways. And so, Lord, we just lift up those who are already, I can, I can already feel it in my spirit. I, since uh, you announced the overturning of Roe v. Wade, I've already just felt the shaking in my spirit. And it just won't leave that, that the evil plans have been set in place. And I can see it. I can feel it, the turbulence. And, Lord, we just plead the blood of Yeshua over the body of Messiah in America, in the nations. This, this is a worldwide decision. It will affect the nations as well. Lord, have mercy. Let us rejoice in you. We rejoice in life. Shemeshua. Carolyn, can I share something? Of course. Of course. Uh, a friend uh, posted this, and uh, it, I think it goes perfectly with the with what we're praying and talking about. She said, today is a milestone day in history. Strap in, folks. And she's talking to believers. Strap in, folks. We've been prepared for this. The coming glorious new season is in sight, but it'll be a fight. God wins. Hallelujah. Um, Carolyn, uh, Pastor Kem Okamiri from Nigeria is on. He's got the most amazing um, ability to pull different seasons together. And this is the 25th week of the year. Uh, Pastor Kem, are you there? Could you just briefly explain what you wrote? Are you there? Yes, thank you, Sue. Um, I'm here. I, I just it just caught my attention that exactly what um, Carolyn was speaking about with the season of Cora really parallels with what you spoke and what we're seeing now happen in the United States and the call for watchmen and gatekeepers to watch this gate that's opening up. Yes. 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 Right now, I guess. Uh, yeah. um, Kim, are you there? Yes, yes, I'm here. If you could just briefly, uh, not all of it, but maybe can give a concise focus for what you saw uh, that coming this week. Yeah, this is um, this is the the twenty fifth. Um, this is the twenty fifth. Uh, week of the of the year and um, the book of the book of the 25th book of the bible is lamentations and there's something special about that book every chapter has 22 verses and uh, 22 is comprehensiveness from beginning to end and so that's a week when god takes his place as sovereign his word rules his counsel prevails so he judges and takes full control. So I think that that's like what has happened. God has taken full charge and said, my word, my counsel will stand and prevail. Amen. Awesome. If you read, you read Lamentations, the first chapter has 22 verses. Second chapter has 22 verses. The third chapter has 66 verses. The fourth chapter has 22 verses. And the fifth chapter has 22 verses. And um, going by the Hebrew alphabet that has 22 letters, A to Z. So this is the week of the comprehensive one, the week of the one who is the beginning and the end. And I think he has ruled and overruled. Amen. And it's the, I, I would encourage everybody to go on the Global Watch uh, to um, thread and read what else he says. But this, is, this gate is opening, and it's a call to the watchmen and gatekeepers to take their place. And that's what the next hour is going to be on uh, exactly that. So we're it, it, something supernatural is transpiring right now. There's a convergence and you can feel, I think that's the shaking you're feeling, Carolyn. Absolutely. Absolutely. We are at a time of convergence and 
We are nearing the end of this watch and moving into the next one. And I would like us to take a minute to get your matzah or your bread and a little bit of wine uh, or grape juice. And let's go and have communion together as we enter into the Shabbat. Um, so I'll give you just a second to get those things together. Uh, at one point, um, I mean, more people have joined now because we're, we're moving into the next watch, but Marvie wrote and said, there are 99 on the call. That ties in with the uh, first worship song that we sang together. The, uh, he leaves the 99 and goes after the one. That's our God. You know, again, tying in everything with, with what we've seen as we enter into the communion. Wow, we just thank you, Father, that even the wine is representative of this. It's, it's a beautiful fruit that we pick, but the only way we can get the wine is it has to be crushed and then lightly fermented. And that's what you do to us. And so we, we thank you, Father. We thank you when you have taken us through the refiner's fire. We thank you, Lord, for all the things that are going to be coming. We just want to speak into the things that are coming. We know that some will be very difficult. Some will even be devastating. But we thank you and we praise you because you said to give you thanks in all things. And so we do that now as we remember. You took... You took the wine, you took the bread. As you took the bread and you said, this is my body that was broken for you. Lord, you were truly broken for us. It didn't get any worse than that. The, the devastation on your body was beyond anything. We weren't even, you weren't even recognizable after all that you went through. And yet we take this matzah and we do this in remembrance of you and we break it together as you broke it. And we declare, Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Amotzi lechem min haaretz. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who brings forth the bread from the earth. B'Shem Yeshua. And we thank you, Father, that as we take this cup, we rejoice in the cup of our salvation. We rejoice in the salvation of all those babies' lives that will be happening now that Roe v. Wade has been overturned. We rejoice in the cup of your provision. And we do this in remembrance of you, our Savior. And we ask that the blood of our Messiah would be put over every church, ever, over every pro-life clinic in America. Even now, as we drink this together in remembrance of what you did for us. Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who brings forth fruit from the vine. Shabbat shalom, Shabbat shalom. Shabbat 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 Shalom Shabbat Shalom Shabbat Shalom Shabbat 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 Shalom Shabbat 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 Shalom Shabbat 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 Shalom Shabbat Shalom Shabbat Shalom Shabbat 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 Shalom Hallelujah and I just want to pray over each one of you.
May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and may he grant you his peace. In the name of Yeshua, our Messiah, I bless you from here in the Galilee. And I send much love, and I'm so looking forward to seeing some of you in Harrenhut and some of you in California and Texas. May the Lord God be with each one of you this Shabbat. Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Caroline. Shabbat Shalom. 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 Um, just so that everybody knows, we're transitioning now into a special watch. Um, it's an alert uh, between Israel and America. So <laughs> I just wanted to make sure, in case you didn't get the message, um, that everybody uh, who's interested to stay on. We've got special guests with us, um, yeah. Rick Ridings from Sukkot so, Halal. Sue, so before, we, before, before we do that, because we're not, it's not quite the top of the hour yet, yeah. let's just okay. transition out of, the, out of this uh, Shabbat uh, yes. meeting. And we just want to say, Carolyn, to you, thank you so much for leading for this hour. Uh, what a, what a historic, memorable Shabbat <laughs> this is, and uh, and we are so looking forward to having you come to the to the states, to California, and to seeing you in um, Heronhood. And we love you. We're just so thankful for your ministry. And again, we just declare over you the best days of your life and your ministry are ahead of you and not behind you. So, um, Susan, do you have uh, any announcements before we go into the next hour? Um, no, it's just that I believe that we're in a, a divine appointment on this next call. Uh, this whole thing has been amazing, what's unrolling in the nations. And um, yes, uh, I do. For those who are interested, we've got a few spots available. Things are really um, packing in for Heronhut. But I believe we're really in a purposeful meeting. It's going to be a round table with heaven. And God is going to release strategies. I believe the, and the word was that we were at the Red Sea. And are we going to put our foot in the Red Sea and watch the waters part? And we're seeing the waters begin to part already. But I believe there's strategies for kingdom advance that he's going to be giving us. Um, and the word I'm getting this morning for Hanhood is greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. And this is not a time to give up. Um, we got a word in the Santa Maria healing rooms this weekend that it's a 911 time. This time it's the, the, <laughs> it's the enemy Ooh. that's on the run <laughs> because the strength of God's people the, in the grassroots, we're seeing such a grassroots strength rise up. Uh, in the body of Christ. Now, I've, I'm just very, very encouraged uh, to see what is happening in, in the nation. So I want everybody here to feel encouraged in the Lord. You're important. What God is showing you is important. Do not go to sleep on it. Take it and run and begin to see how God wants you to develop what God has put in your heart to speak and to say. So, um, yep. so also, if you have not if you are planning on registering for the um, for the Heron Hut meeting, we still have some slots open, but they're closing fast. You have to get your registration in by the last day in June. Okay, so don't procrastinate um, and uh, and get them in. It's going to be a uh, it's going to be a meeting like no other uh, this year, and so oh, we're right. really looking forward to that.